All right, this video is going to be a short answer to number three on our linear kinetics prep guide. First, I want to remind you of the kinematic graphs that we've gone over for running for the hip, knee, ankle. Here's angular position and percent of cycle, right? So this is the position. Percent of cycle just means uh, instead of time, you've kind of rubber banded it. So um, you can compare multiple people that run at different paces. But as, so hopefully you remember, we had the stance phase and the swing phase, typically 40% stance phase for running, 60% swing phase. For the knee joint, we went into flexion, extension, flexion, extension throughout the cycle. All right, so this is the kinematics. It describes what the joint's doing. So here is the graph from the prep guide, and it shows vertical ground reaction force and horizontal ground reaction force. So you have your vertical ground reaction force here, your horizontal, your braking, and your propulsion. And this is just the vector of your ground reaction force, right? It's, it's pushing against you when you first have heel contact, and then it's propelling you when you go into toe off. But what I want you to understand is that the ground reaction force is the force when you touch the ground, right? Here's the foot. So it only occurs for the stance phase, all right? Swing phase, no ground reaction force because you're in the air. So let's look at this graph a little bit deeper. So the vertical or the y-axis is the vertical ground reaction force, and the units are in body weight, times body weight. We've talked about this before, that you can have them in newtons, but sometimes that's a little abstract for people. So you can see, running is about two times body weight load on your body. And so the vertical is always gonna be the highest force. And then your horizontal, which is basically your shear force, so along the AP axis, anterior, posterior, is basically your braking and your propulsion. So when you f first have heel contact, you have a force kind of pushing you backwards, your braking force, and then as you go into toe off, this force changes and propels you forward. So you can see the red lines there. And they correspond to these red lines here, right? So First, they're pushing you backwards, and then they change to propel you forward. Now, the percent stance is similar to our kinematics. It's just the percent of your stance phase, not of the whole gait cycle, just of the stance. So mid stance is about 50%. You can see they're right at mid stance. So it's heel contact, then mid stance, and then at 100% of the stance phase, you go into toe off. And then we go into the um, swing phase, which is not on the ground reaction force. I also wanted to show you the ground reaction forces that you also have in your prep guide. So we have the vertical force. Looks a little bit different because this is a heel toe runner, so you always have that impact peak. And this is your basically where a toe off occurs, so that's your max. And then you have the shear force in, as we said, the AP direction along the ground and you have a braking force and then a propulsion force. Do not worry that braking is positive in this graph. That's just the, the how the engineers programmed it. Braking always comes for propulsion. When you have heel contact or foot contact, the ground, you're pushing on the ground, the ground is pushing you back. And then when you're propelling yourself forward at toe off, the ground, you're pushing back on the ground and the ground is pushing you forward.